what we do here is go back, 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 back. back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Camera Crash Course. Today, I'm going to show you how to take, make, and edit photographs in the style of the best portrait photographer in the world, Brandon Wolfall. All right, guys, let's get into it. If you really want to shoot like Brandon Wolfall, you're going to need a lens that can live up to the standards. He uses a 50mm Prime F1.4. I use a 35mm Prime f1.4 uh, the reason I use f1.4 is pretty good because you want it to open up and give you a nice solid depth of field that gives you a really decent out of focus bokeh background uh, if you use 85 you'll get more if you use 50 millimeter you get more so if you want to be like Brandon Wolfel use a 50 millimeter f1.4 although 35 millimeter works just as fine all right guys so pause the video right here I'm actually editing the video right now and I realized that I forgot to mention that he does use other ones to do besides the 50 millimeter after talking to Mastin on Instagram, he told me that he uses the 105 and 85, uh, 50 like we said, as well as the 35mm Prime. So that's a great range of uh, focal lengths. Each one has a different purpose. So if you guys are looking to shoot like Green Wolfel, he uses a 105, 85, 50, as well as 35mm lenses. So once you got your lens situation figured out, it's time to pick a location to shoot. Now if you study his style, he likes to shoot a lot of locations that use neon lighting and or LED lighting. Uh, so if you stick with a location like a bar sign or something that has red, green, light blues, blues, and purples, uh, you're going to be able to get the best portrait shot. So you're going to be able to go up on f1.4, get some shallow depth of field, and illuminate the subject's face with a nice tint of blue, green, purple, red, magenta, pretty much those colors. And that's that's the uh, that's the color patterns or whatever you're going to want to shoot and, and mimic his style with. Alright, so when it comes time to shoot your models and do your portrait photography, if your model never uh, posed before, have them look at some of his style, Brandon Wolf style, just have them pull up a Google page of mo uh, models, have them look at it, have your model stand, pose however you want them to because you're, the, uh, you're the photographer, take your photos, go over Lightroom, and I'll see you there. Alright guys, so once you've finished shooting out on location, it's time to open up your computers, get Lightroom pulled up, and we'll begin editing your photos. Let's begin. All right, viewers, welcome back. Here we are, we're in Lightroom, and today we're gonna be editing like Brandon Wolfel. So if you don't have Lightroom, go ahead and grab that for yourself. You can get it for $9.99 a month. If you don't have Lightroom, uh, you're gonna to wanna to figure out a way to get this because this tutorial is gonna be using Lightroom, and I don't know of any other program out there that will make Lightroom photos, uh, make your photos look like Brandon Wolfel without using Lightroom. So make sure you have Lightroom, and let's begin. All right, guys, welcome to Lightroom. Today, we're gonna to be taking the before image on the left turning it into the after image on the right in Lightroom, then we're gonna take it over to Photoshop and turn it into something like this. So if you wanna learn how to do that, continue watching and let's begin. All right guys, so once you get your portrait photo in, go ahead, jump over to develop module and open up the basic slider here. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna to wanna to open up the blacks, put them over into the plus or whatever. Uh, make sure the blacks um, stay in the we want to we want to make sure the image uh, has a flat look to it. So go ahead and take the blacks and drag them to the right. Otherwise, if you drag them to the left, we're going to get a very solid looking black. So we want a little bit of a whiter black. So bring them over or bring the blacks over, not the whites. Bring the blacks over to the left, and we'll get kind of a flat, uh, more of a matte look going here. Same with the whites. Go ahead, open up the whites so you have a bright white spot, and that looks pretty good. Open up the shadows a little bit, and drop the highlights. So on the face there, we want to drop the highlights. And that looking pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and just add a boost touch of clarity and drop the white balance a little bit into the blues. And we get a little bit of blue over here in the background. So what we need to go now is we need to go over to the HSL and change the saturation of the pinks. So because the saturation on the pinks is always often blown out, cameras have a hard time with pinks and reds. We're just going to drop the saturation a little bit on the magentas. Um, there we go until we get a more natural looking skin tone look at that guys no detail much more detail there and even over here um, on the sign the doco sign got a lot more detail going on there and then we can also change the luminance so we can add just a little bit more brightness or whatever to the image and for HSL there we go so this is always this is always to taste guys and that's suitable for you it comes to editing like Brandon Wolf with a big thing we're going to go over here to the camera calibration and we're going to want to change our reds to more of a pink and then our blues to more of a teal so look at that and then this can be fall in between kind of something like that so in just a couple clicks guys with the camera 
uh, calibration slider here, we've been able to change our uh, our image to look more like Brain and Wolfel. We have our pinks and our oranges. So depending on your image, guys, you're gonna have to drag your red primary over to uh, probably in most cases, drag your red primary over into the left as well as the blue and probably the green. This will give you a look like Brain and Wolfel. And we can also brighten it up uh, to taste. Quick before and after. As you guys can see, the image on the um, on the left is the image I've already edited, so I'm trying to get it to look as close to that as possible. Um, and we can just go ahead and reset this here, so you guys can see before and after. It's Command Z, and now we have this. So the next thing that we see a lot of Brandon Wolfel style, the faded colors. So we're going to go over here to the split toning, or not split toning. We're going over to the tone curve. We're going to take this part of the image down here in the lower left part of the square. I'm just going to drag it up. Now as you drag it up, you see, look at how the blacks turn faded. And we can add just a little bit of a drop on the top or right. And then kind of just play around with it a little bit. And look at this before and after. It adds that faded, that classic faded look, the Brandon Wolfel style. All right, guys, so the image is looking pretty good already. I'm going to take a radial filter here. I'm going to drag it over my model's face. Um, and I'm just going to slightly add, move some of the saturation from it and just what uh, so ever so slightly um, just add a small amount of exposure compensation so I'm just drag it down a little bit because it seems like his face is just a little bit overexposed so drag it down a little bit before and after as you can see you have just a little bit more detail in my model's face uh, maybe saturation not so much unlike so again we're going to drag another filter and we're going to put it on the over his hair here. I want it to be a little bit more blue. So again, just make sure it's in the inside, whatever layer you want it to be. Add a little blue there. Um, ramp up the exposure a little bit and make sure the blue fits in. So look at that. Now we can have more of a natural looking uh, separation from the hard dragon line that we found right here into a more natural looking blue, which is rating off the sign. So you see there's like a, a C here. There's like a letter C here. There was an O over here that was blue or something like that. So you can see we have some blue on his hair. We're going to fix that by just doing radio filter. And now guys, this image is ready to go in the Photoshop before and after looking pretty good. Really nice and faded. Uh, so we'll go ahead, right click on the image, edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop, and I'll see you over there. All right, guys, so now we've opened the photo into Photoshop. And the first thing I always want to do to be non-destructive, I like to work with a non-destructive workflow, duplicate the layer and you can turn it on or off and you guys can see the bottom layer is there. So we're gonna be working the top layer and if you have to revert anything, the bottom layer is always there. So at this point, you just wanna to wanna to pull up a Google search and just search for Boca. Um, you can use anything such like a Prism Boca and then see what Google pulls up because if you look at a lot of Brain Wolf of Style, it uses something called a Diamond Prism and if we just use a, we use like a, a, a Boca like this, save the image as uh, something, we'll just call it um, Boca for now. Save that image and we'll use that in the image to create um, a uh, bow cut effect. And we'll also look for something else. So I'll be back once I find that. All right, guys, so I'm back. We're going to open up our bokeh image. Let me find it real quick. We saved it here. So this one right here, I just call it bokeh ing because why not? Um, there we go. Drag that from the background, bring it over to our image for editing. Yes and continue. So now you guys can see it's right there. Now these are out of focus lights which are um, caused by the aperture being wide open and focused on a certain part besides them. So that's why we have these dots in the background here and these dots up here in the front um, towards the model's face. So what we're going to try to do here is just take these things and position them somewhere that looks good. We'll turn the screen mode onto screen. Now guys we have these little kind of twinkling lights here so we'll, we'll put some right around there enter and now we're just going to click this little camera icon here this is, I'm going as fast as possible so if you want to follow along slow the video down change your hardness here turn the brush into black and just kind of paint along the hard edges of the image here you can change the opacity of this so it looks a little bit more natural again duplicate the layer and this is what we're gonna do we're gonna drag it control T drag in place and boom, there we go, guys. We have um, a finished image here, or uh, we're starting to get more of a finished image here. Just put that around there, turn this image off, go over here, put a brush on, fade this out, turn this back on, and now we have uh, it was starting to look more like a more bokeh, 
or whatever prison bokeh in the bottom as seen with a lot of Brandon Wolfel's images. On ahead and I re-imported a different uh, type of style of bokeh. This is more of a diamond prism or what do you want, whatever you want to call it. Hit enter, let that render out. Um, get this into a location that looks good. We'll hit screen mode and then you can kind of see through it a little bit. And I would just kind of angle it up to a location that fits our image something like that I'd say is pretty good. Go ahead and put a layer mask on this. Oops. Well, uh, go ahead, put a layer mask on this like always. Grab our brush and just take down the rough hard edge that is on the edge of these things. So you just want to cut it down so it doesn't look as unnatural. Now guys, I'm doing this quick. Um, I, re I recommend taking more time with this um, and figuring out something that looks a little bit better. But again guys, I making this tutorial so you guys get the general idea and then let your creativity take flow and you create your own images like Brandon Wolfel does. So pretty much guys, we're just gonna, this pretty much is wash, rinse and repeat and it'll just kind of just add the bokeh into where we want it to, drop the opacity and once you get it to a place that you like it, it's time to take this photo over into something called Google Nick, which is an add-on for Lightroom. So once you have that, go ahead and open that up. I'm going to take all these images, I'm going to put them into a group here. I can turn this on or off, we have all of our bokeh. We'll just take the opacity, drop it a little bit. And then a quick tip here, if you go click on your group and hit Control alt e if you actually click on the group, Control alt e it'll duplicate it. So now we have a fully duplicated version of this. Turn this off. Okay, so now this is there. And you can go Filter, Knit Collection and we're going into the uh, Killer Fix Pro. Now you guys don't have to use the Nick collection, you can call it good here, but if you do have Google Nick, this is an added feature which will look really good in here for your photos. So as you guys can see when we open uh, the Google Nick, it looks like this is showing every single layer on a square canvas or whatever. So we're just looking at the part in here and we wanna go over to the wedding uh, and we're gonna go to the Photo Stylizer. Now this is my favorite part, this is one of my favorite features in the uh, Google uh, Nick collection. We have a bunch of different filters we can apply to it. Um, I'm looking for that one right there. Uh, as you guys can see, it puts a more of a blue and teal and pinky look to it. So we can just call, we can change the strength of the image right around there and the overall opacity, we can change that as well. Something like that looks good. Before and after, pretty decent. And uh, yeah, hit okay. And now once that finally renders out, we'll have a good image that looks much better than before. And this is, uh, the, the, using Google Nick, we'll be able to create a style and look that we uh, can't necessarily achieve that easily with just using uh, Lightroom. It just adds a different perspective and look to it. So once it's finished rendering out, I'll show it to you. Before and after, we have a much different and more, uh, I'm gonna call it the Brandon Wolfel style image here. We have very decent aqua, um, we're very light blue looking blues. We have very uh, desaturated looking pinks and the whole image is flat and just looks something in the style of Brandon Wolfel. Obviously guys, this image is my own personal uh, editing style. It's not Brandon Wolfel, nobody can do him. He is pretty much the god of portrait photography, but this is pretty much the same kind of style and stylized version of Brandon Wolfel's style, if you get what I'm saying. Go ahead, save this over. Go ahead, open Lightroom and your image will be there. All right guys, so as you guys can see, we took this image here uh, right out of Lightroom. If you go over to the develop module, you'll be able to see it better. So we took it from right out of the back of the camera, which looks very oversaturated and not, not really that well. So we took it from something like, actually here, let me show you. All right guys, so we took an image like this, turned it into something like this, and then with a little help, help, with a little help from Photoshop, we turned it into an image like that. Um, my favorite image is that one right there. Obviously, I was not, I'm not able to cre recreate my same image every single time, but both have a decent look and both look like Brandon Wolfel. So, if you guys like this tutorial, uh, go ahead and leave a like on it and I'll see you on the outro. So guys, we learned this episode is we learned how to take a photo, edit a photo, and then take that photo into Photoshop, add some bokeh and stuff, and make it look like a Brandon Wolfel style photograph that you can post on Instagram and use yourself. So this is a very cool type of editing style. 
Um, I'm not sure if exactly down the south at uh, Brandon Wolfel. I don't think anybody knows how to take photos like him, but it was so close. It looks really good. It looks like Brandon Wolfel style, and I hope you guys enjoy how to do it. So if you guys like what you're watching here, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I post videos once a week, sometimes twice, on Tuesdays and Saturdays, depending on my posting schedule. So if you guys uh, like this video, go ahead and subscribe for more. Leave a like on this video, leave a comment. I'll probably comment back. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time on Camera Crash Course.